Could you build a supercar? Let's find out. Welcome back supercar fans. Today we have a topic that is near and dear to my heart and that is putting new supercars into the market. Right now the supercar world is on an upswing. As we all know, if you are the new popular thing, everybody wants to get in on it. Think about new brands like Pininfarina, Bertone throwing their hat in the ring, Di Tommaso, which is showing everybody how it's done, while Gordon Murray is going to put on a clinic and being able to build whatever he wants and selling out faster than bottled water in the desert. And those aren't coincidences either. They're the writing on the wall. These guys aren't rolling dices. They know exactly what they're doing. And they aren't the only ones either. I could sit here for an hour and talk about the new multi-million dollar supercar being introduced on what seems like a monthly basis by some unknown company that suddenly the news is eating up like it's gold. Why? Because everybody wants to be the next McLaren. So I'm not going to lie to you like they do. Some are about as exciting as watching paint peel. This one is an example of go home and do it again. I think you know what I mean. But some dude in a magazine, he's telling me this is the next cheap supercar. And that's an instant way to get the same skepticism of rest stop sushi. If it's easy to make with AI and 3D printing, then anybody can make it. What's making you special? And therein lies the reality. Anybody has the potential to build a supercar today. There are literally videos on YouTube about baking carbon fiber in your oven like it's some automotive Julia child. The internet and even more so social media is filled with individuals that give up major organs to be part of something groundbreaking. I mean, who wouldn't want to be the next Paolo Stanzani or Bob Wallace? And if you don't know those names, what, what am I even doing here? So there is so much more than just raw skill, which is why I say there's always potential. But it takes more than potential. It takes more than just ability. It takes passion. Creating a supercar isn't just a labor of love. It's someone too stupid to know they can fail. The kind of person that headbutts a wall for an hour and asks for more. And it will test you financially, physically, and mentally. The first hurdle you're going to overcome is a budget. And if you think you're going to do this without a budget, if you're just going to jump in the ring and get ready to box, you're about to be knocked out faster than a Tyson fight. If I had a dollar for every person that ever told me they'd build or fix up a kit car, I wouldn't need to build one. I could just buy a Pagani and call it an evening. But what you budget is going to depend on what you want to build. If you want to build like a simple Lotus style vehicle, you'll have far less hurdles than building, say, a custom hybrid 2000 horsepower monster car. When I was involved in supercar building, I'd say a million five hundred thousand for a 600 to 800 horsepower vehicle with no frills today to build a fully fledged hybrid style supercar would be in the five million range i'd say at minimum so again there's a lot of ways to cut around that and not do everything that most people do and probably get your number way way down the bugatti veyron for instance the concord of the road lost about 10 million dollars per unit sold for at least a few years after it was produced and the question really is is did it ever break even that we never know. Truth be told, the chances are you're going to be limited by somebody else's investment. I doubt many people have a million five hundred thousand to five million laying around on the couch someplace. So the reality is you're going to need an investor and somebody's putting money into the project and that's really going to limit your build. The biggest cost of any of this stuff is it's in creating something or for those in the business world, research and development where most cars can spend 10, 20, 40% on that sector. A supercar can spend upwards of 70 to 90% on developing something new and cutting edge. It's almost their bread and butter. See, going 100 miles per hour, that's fairly easy. Going 180 miles per hour, that's going to take some thought. Going 250 miles per hour, yeah, that's going to take some engineering prowess. Prowess, interestingly enough, you probably don't have. So once you have a bank account or hopefully a sturdy investor, you'll need parts to put it together. And I've seen many say just build a kick car and sell it. And that sounds really great on the surface. But if you spend $100,000 designing a kit, making sure it works right, then show it off to the world, why would they buy your car when they could spend $30,000 on the original kit and just build it themselves? Coach work. That's the answer. And it's an underappreciated area of expertise. Being able to make your new car look compelling, 
it's going to be a driving force. First impressions and all. Building a body to go on a frame is where true art plays a role. The Maserati MC12 is just a rebodied Enzo, but that new body equated to a successful racing career and a cherished vehicle. The underside of the vehicle will be where the rubber meets the road, so to speak, but you'll be amazed at how simple and quick the answers will rise to the top. You won't be designing everything from scratch, far from it. A lot of these areas have been researched and developed for years in race cars, so there's a lot of opportunities out here to take something that's tried and true and just turn it into something that goes on the street. And unlike laws like EPA, Yay, nobody cares if you put a racing suspension on your street legal car. The other thing to remember is you don't have a Toyota size warehouse to source parts from. Finding good suppliers is going to play a major role, but don't be afraid to use what works. Kona Seg started its existence with a Ford modular engine and some very interesting doors. Porsche literally Frankenstein many of its early cars together in such a way that many people even questioned if they were Porsches. This is the place not to put your faith in shoddy products. There are a ton of aftermarket guys out there that will promise you a 2,000 horsepower aftermarket monster engine. And sure, it could be tempting to be the next big guy with the big numbers, but the truth is, is those engines aren't going to go 100,000 miles without braking. In fact, some of them may not even go 50 feet. Reliability has killed more supercars than you know and left even more as clay models on a design room floor. Even more so, designing a vehicle that kills its drivers... It should be avoided at all cost. That being said, it shouldn't be too hard to build or acquire a frame, find an engine and a drivetrain to deliver the power, and a suspension that will carry it to the finish line. The rest is just the computers and sensors that put it all together, and much of that stuff has been built for race cars for years and years and years, so it's out there. For me, the section I would focus on the most is without a doubt aerodynamics and suspension, which will truly put you over the edge and keep you from shaking the vehicle to death over 80 miles per hour. Every car in the world has been defined by the way it cuts through the wind and stays planted on the ground. And even though this area will make you pull your hair out because it requires going back and forth, building and rebuilding to get that perfect downforce. Once it's completed, it's the true main course of the meal. In fact, if I were to build my supercar tomorrow, it would focus on aerodynamics, suspension, and reliability over horsepower any day of the week. If you can build a car with 400 horsepower that's outrunning 600 to 1,000 horsepower monsters, that would be the flex that you're going to need to shake up the industry. So at this point, you should have learned how to make it look compelling, made enough horsepower that'll excite any casual driver, and if you did your homework right, it should be capable on the street and not afraid of a little track duty. Sure, there's marketing and other things that you're going to need to learn, but if you played your cars right, hopefully somebody else will be handling that department. And there's one thing here that I want to add that I think is so important. There's nothing wrong with using new tricks, new technology, AI, 3D printing. In fact, new tricks are probably going to be what's going to fuel the next generation of supercars. But nothing replaces good old-fashioned craftsmanship and functionality. Like any modder that's done anything to their vehicle, there is a point when you've gone too far. The marketing point for 80% of the brands out there that you know and love is based on the concept of being hand built. That somebody put the love into the design. And I'll be the first person to admit, some of the AI designs out there I see are absolutely incredible. The pictures are amazing and stunning. But I realized they're just pictures. They're the start of any design. Vehicles that would shake over 80 to 100 miles per hour, cars that would be uncomfortable to sit in, would be hard to view the surrounding areas. In short, there's cars that would simply just fail to work on the road. And everybody knows those concepts have been built that just never seem to look like the same car when they finally hit the road. And that's the truth. Nobody wants to see a clip art car. They want a Van Gogh. So treat it with the respect it deserves. Remember, if anybody can do it, why do they need you? You may have noticed here that I'm keeping everything really simple, stupid. And there's a reason behind that. And it's simply put, because that's what's going to be the next big supercar. Nobody wants all this complicated technological BS. 
They can already buy super equipped Mercedes or hybrid power supercars with 2,000 horsepower, but that's not what they want. What they are dying for is a callback to the Lamborghini Diablos and the Ferrari F360s. They want a car that says, I dare you to turn the key. And honestly, we completely lost that over 15 years ago. There are so many handling and dynamic controls in most cars that whether you're a kid that just got his driver's license or in the throes of a full-on midlife crisis, they aren't even afraid of you crashing. They do care how much it's going to cost for you to fix it, though. And the more things you add, the more possible things can break. And if you've ever driven a Countach, you know it's literally a street-legal V12 go-kart. Without a doubt, the next big car will be somebody shaking up the status quo. And don't believe me? Go back and ask people about the early 90s NSX. A car that was fun and could outrun a Ferrari. Yeah, Ferrari woke up real quick and introduced the F355, but don't think it wasn't a wake-up call. And that's what you want to build. Not some look-at-me cool technology AI 3D. The truth is somebody right now is designing the next RX-7 Audi R8 or some version of a Cayman. And if they succeed, nobody's going to ever let them live it down. Everybody's saying right now Toyota or Honda will be the next supercar, and maybe they will, but I'd like to see it come out of left field. Some young gun straight out of college and a guy from the old guard that says, this just might work. And if history has taught us anything, it'll be somebody that's pretty pissed off at where supercars are headed. Next, Ferruccio Lamborghini, so to speak. And I, for one, have a couple of guys that I think really fit that build. And there are people out now doing just that in different sectors. And truth be told, I'm really looking forward to that. So whether you're building a personal supercar just for fun or you truly want to build a car to compete against a Bugatti, I wish you all the best. I really can't say there may be no better time than now to shake things up. So if you want to see where all this is headed, click that thumbs up and make sure you subscribe. Until next time, check out some of our other awesome products. Check out some of these other videos and hang out on executiveautomotivesociety.com where we're going to be sharing any new news and technology as we go along and as always our almost daily shorts about did you know something about a supercar until then let's keep building the supercar community together we'll talk to you soon